Let's talk about Lord of the Rings Return of the King, the final book in the trilogy, which I've reviewed the other two volumes of already on the channel. Uh, I will give, as I normally do with sequels, a very, very brief, super non-spoiler, doesn't spoil anything about the whole series uh, review. Then I'll discuss the book itself with some light spoilers for what's gone before. Uh, basically, it, it's a very good conclusion, satisfying conclusion, excellent conclusion that does an amazing job with, with characters and setting and resolving the big questions the rest of the book has posed. So, uh, excellent conclusion. To go into to more detail, this is it's non-stop. It's the shortest of the three. So my edition is about 1030, well, yeah, 1030 pages. And it is under 200 pages of that. Um, for uh, under 300 pages, sorry, of that. It's about 270, 280 pages. It's the shortest of the three. It is the paciest of the three. It's non-stop. All of it is worthwhile. Um, the first half, the first book, continues the War of the Ring, and the second, and what what we left two towers with, with the oncoming siege of Gondor and um, the need to the Rohirrim to ride to it. And the second half deals with Sam and Frodo, and then the resolution of the whole story. One thing that keeps uh, the pace high, I think, this is really my comments on two towers is that the more, most intimate and intense section, and therefore always the section that will um, require the most energy and focus, and therefore uh, be the slowest, because one thing, one reason things are slower or quicker is based on our um, sense of, I often, our sense, not of emotional investment, but of emotional um, expenditure, I think. Uh, it's Sam and Frodo section that is shorter here by far. Um, in terms of what they need to do and what happens to them uh, and uh, in terms of their their, their quest in, in Kirith on Gollum Beyond which we've left in Two Towers uh, yeah so it is pacier it has a, a, a better pace than Two Towers Two Towers had a perfectly good pace as I said then it's not it wasn't a big criticism so much as a noticing that that is the one section of the trilogy where um, it doesn't leap on to the next chapter the action is compelling but uh, it, it requires a bit more focus and in some ways uh, this in general in terms of pace it feels like even more of a uh, travelogue and um, ensemble cast than the last two especially Two Towers. Two Towers is quite geographically constrained uh, it's Rohan a few locations in Rohan, um, Fangorn, Isengard and then the Eminmuil, Ithilien, Kirithungol well the Black Gate and, and Kirithungol and some of those uh, marry up in terms of tone and and uh, though they are different in some ways they you know they're not as massively different in others here we uh, go on the dunharrow the paths of the dead west or south gondor anorian minas tirith kirithungol gorgoroth and mount doom the black gate isengard eregion or the ruins of eregion rivendell the shire mithlond uh, you have a, a vast array of places you go to for the first time or return to for an important scene. Um, you, I mean, and you, you also, uh, you technically, they technically go back to Helm's Deep briefly on page. Um, and uh, there is mention of a journey north as well to, to Mirkwood. And we meet many new people. Uh, we meet various named orcs. Uh, we meet, most importantly, probably the single most important addition, Denethor, the steward of Gondor. Uh, we meet Prince Imrahil, the, the hereditary prince of Dol Amroth in Gondor, Beragond of the uh, the Fountain Court Guard, and Bergil, his son. We meet Dunhir, the Lord of Dunharrow, Halbarad, the son of Bear of the Dunedain, uh, Ganberry Gan in the Druidan Forest, the other lords of Gondor, there's various of them, uh, the healers in the Houses of Healing, who give us, some of them will give us a ground level view of civilian life in Minas Tirith, the King of the Dead, the Witch King, uh, various characters in the Shire, and uh, f indeed Círdan, the Lord of the Grey Havens, uh, who, hey, he, apparently he'll still be on Earth because he's waiting for the last elf to go west. Uh, so yeah, you've got all these characters who you meet, and it all the character stuff is, is pulled off in high style. Uh, for some characters, the appearance is very brief, or they only get a few lines. Tolkien draws them deftly, um, sometimes he draws them very simply, Sometimes he draws them more complexly, but it's always deft. What I mean is you always come away thinking, okay, I know he's that kind of character, I guess. Yeah, that makes sense. 
For some characters, they get a good amount of time or a very strong, if brief, appearance. Denethor, uh, the most detailed new character, the strongest character in that sense as well. Imrahil, uh, who is um, often a background character, but regularly appears and you do get a, a, a kind of very clear sense in a simple way of who he is. Beragond and Burgil. Beragond is one of my, my favourite characters in The Lord of the Rings. Uh, he is not, nor is Imrahil or Burgil, Beragond's son. None of them are in the adaptation, which is a shame. Ganberry Gan, uh, Old Man Cotton, Rosie Cotton, Kirdan, all of them, even with a very, very brief appearance, very strongly drawn. And we do get a lot more character work uh, from our mainstays. Frodo, Sam, Gollum, Merry and Pippin particularly, so the five hobbits, if you will, both get very important character moments, several in each case, uh, for Merry and Pippin. Uh, Frodo and Sam is a more continuous thing. We get a genuinely, incredibly well done arc. Um, Eowyn and Faramir get very good kind of arcs that are very well done, very neatly, briefly, pacely put together. There's lots of development for Saruman and indeed for Gandalf. Uh, there, there's an interesting like Gandalf is less close than he used to be, we hear, um, somewhat early on. Um, I don't know exactly where, but you know, about halfway through, I think, uh, as an offhand line. There is a legendary conclusion to Theoden's arc. There's satisfying work on, on Eomer, on Aragorn, on Arwen, on Elrond, Galadriel, Celeborn. And of course, the continuing growth of Legolas and Gimli's friendship. Uh, we get, you know, th there is none of it that is not satisfying. Some of it you think, oh, I wouldn't mind actually seeing more of it. Much like, I I'd like to see Dol Amroth. I'd like to spend more time uh, with, I don't know, with Imrahil or um, with Eomer. You know, things like that. Uh, but generally speaking, I didn't think that. I was like, oh, this is great. The places we see are distinctive. Uh, they are, if they're new, or there are very strong, excellent returns to them. The Darkness of the Paths of the Dead, I recently did a trivia video on that, and the wildness of the Druidan Forest, the decayed beauty of Minas Tirith, the horrors of the Black Land, um, and especially the return to the Shire is, is excellent. Now, in terms of what the book does, um, the first, it's, I think, a, a worthwhile thing to, to reflect on is 1,030 pages my trilogy is. And that is uh, fairly small text, not not tiny. The first hundred or so are in the Shire, or including concerning hobbits, is in the Shire and about the hobbits. Uh, then the next forty or so are the first threshold bits with Tom Bombadil, I Old Forest House of Tom Bombadil, Fog on the Barrow Downs. One hundred and forty pages of setup, so uh, well over ten percent. The last eighty pages or so, a bit under ten percent, deal with conclusions. Uh, the glories and rewards of, of the adventures and the costs and tragedies of the adventures. Uh, the ways in which the War of the Ring affects uh, not just the places you see at first, but how it affects the rest of the world. You hear and see more and more about how it's affected the world. And um, the fact Tolkien creates, he crams an epic cycle into a thousand pages and he puts over 20% of that on scene setting and on um, conclusions is intentional and in my view these are some of the best sections in the trilogy some of the very best sections and what T Tolkien chooses to put at the start and the end are of vital importance to understanding the middle understanding the point of the book and they are I think again integrated well on the whole uh, they're subtly carefully his writing is as I've said before is very beautiful he actually writes uh, detailed battle scenes here as well if you want a new thing that he hasn't done very much of before uh, but they are still less detailed um, and less important than several other things. Um, there's one reason they are less detailed is actually because he presents the chaos and confusion of what's happening very well, which means sometimes you don't get to have a bird's eye view of what's happening. Uh, but for instance, as an example, Pippin gets more time with Beragond and their friendship than we get the campaign, the campaign in Athelion and at the back Black Gate. We get more time with Pippin and Beragond. Um, it reminds us that Tolkien cares about character and landscape more than action. His interest is in the stakes, uh, not in the instruments, because the stakes are not the action. The action is an instrument for the stakes. That's what Faramir says and what he means in Two Towers when he says, I love not the sword for its swiftness, the arrow for its speed or the whatever for the shield for its whatever, uh, but that which they defend. 
the action here though i should say it is very good this is the the most action heavy book more than two towers and um, it's worth that's one thing you think of helm steep as as a great action scene but actually two towers has i think it has a report of a battle two reports of battles actually because it has a report of isengard and a report of um or so uh, but yeah three reports of battles the fords of Isen, isengard and the, the ambush by amr on the orcs and it has one battle basically i it has uh, helm's deep and helm's deep is is a chapter and the battle is actually less than a full chapter and then the other half book four has one battle in it seen from something of a distance and the rest of it is is Frodo and Sam walking around. Here uh, we have uh, the Siege of Gondor, the Battle of the Pelennor Fields, the Black Gate opens, um, a few other mentions and reports of battles, um, and then uh, some stuff later on. So you get a lot more here in terms of action. And it is very well done in some of his most moving writing. Uh, the action here is, I think it's fair to say, more moving and more dramatic than Helm's Deep, even though Helm's Deep I think is very good. Um, and Helm's Deep is great for the Legolas Gimini stuff. Uh, but the action here is great. This is, like I said, it's very moving. The book in general is very moving. Return of the King is the emotional payoff section, much more than anything else. Um, it has some of his most moving writing. Uh, he both pays off the whole story and he adds more in. He adds, he, he never fails to take the opportunity to be like, by the way, also this, by the way, also this. Um, and though you might sometimes think I want more time with that, it never feels throwaway uh, because it's all in his head. The whole world exists in such reality in his head and it never feels uh, cheap or silly or um, like a waste of our time. You know, like, oh, he just uh, this. this was, oh, well, some people I'd say criticism people offer of the Lord of the Rings is they, they are like, oh, why did they do that? Um, but I think once you have... Uh, matched his pace and once you've understood what he's interested in uh, then I think you this is one thing I was listening just yesterday to uh, a conversation about something else but uh, about D&D &D, but where a criticism came up of Lord of the Rings for, for people who really liked it but they're like you know this idea that um, the uh, the state you know because everything used to be better that makes it lame now and it's not particularly fun now um, and there's all this other information um and i just it just struck me that's something which indicates a miss even though these people love the books great a misunderstanding of what tolkien wants to achieve i think you need to deal with what tolkien's actually trying to achieve and like or dislike that rather than uh, uh get caught up on your own preconception it's the same with any book and i think here once you've matched his pace once you've accepted his stakes i that they're what matters to him um for me at least it, it ends up uh, being uh, the best book or best trilogy of of all time um and uh the things he is constantly adding, the new details that are coming in, are only ever adding to the sense of this real world which you care about and the stakes of which you, you have thoroughly uh, interiorised as well. Anyway, that is my thoughts. You tell me what you think in the comments. Is this your... How does this rank in your Lord of the Rings ranking? And uh, where does Lord of the Rings rank for you overall? Till next time.